How easy is it for an Android user to switch to an iPhone? We'll be finding that out in this video review of the iPhone 13. Athar is going to be detailing his experience dealing the iPhone 13. Being an Android user who mainly uses Samsung phones and switching to an iPhone, Athar was forced to make this decision when his Galaxy F62 had display issues. Although he has used an iPhone in the past, I think he used an iPhone 6s Plus for a couple of months, but that was a long time back. And this video is going to be covering everything you need to know about the iPhone 13. In my opinion, a good phone is one which has the overall balance of a good display, battery, camera and software, which the iPhone does exceptionally well at. I'll get to each of the categories separately. Starting with the display, you get a 6.1 inch OLED display with a 60Hz refresh rate. Many people might feel 60Hz is too outdated, but it wasn't a deal breaker for me because I had never used a higher refresh rate display before and Apple's animations are so well tuned that I didn't feel the lack of a higher refresh rate. Not once since I bought the phone in the end of June last year did I feel any jitters or lags while using the phone. The display is very color accurate and viewing angles are also great. I used to use a 6.7 inch display before so I was very skeptical about switching to the smaller sized display and whether I'll be able to adjust to it and stuff but I'm happy to report that you'll get used to it in no time. I've gotten used to the smaller screen size so much that one day I held my friend's phone and I was feeling that it was too huge. Overall, if I had to rate the display out of 10, I would give it a solid 9. Moving on to the camera, I'm not that kind of a person who takes a lot of pictures, but whenever I did, they turned out as expected. Pictures of nature and landscape come out well and I had no complaints whatsoever. However, what I noticed with pictures involving human subjects is that the face looks a bit washed out and kind of like a watercolour painting. I've noticed this in my mom's iPhone 13 Pro as well. This is usually when you zoom in to a shot. I don't know if this is the situation in One X as well. Um, I'm not sure if it's because of the lenses being dirty or um, what is the exact issue or is it the processing issue. But this is what I've noticed and so I thought I'll let you guys know. All those people who have praised the iPhone's video quality were right and we have used the iPhone's back camera to record some of our episodes itself, so you can be the judge of the phone's video quality. In fact, this A-roll footage itself is being recorded on the iPhone 13 Pro's main camera. I am not that much of a camera expert to get into the nitty gritty details, but from a normal user's perspective, I would say you will have no complaints at all with the camera. This is a sample of the selfie video recording from the iPhone 13. This is how the selfie video quality will be trying to manage the HDR in the post probably this is the sample of the selfie video quality I rate the camera as high as an 8 out of 10 Coming to the software experience there were some things I missed from Android which I will talk about later in the video but if you ignore those minor nitpicking the software experience is amazing Like I said earlier in all my usage I have not faced a single lag, jitter or bug and the software experience is the most stable and I'll say that no Android phone can match iOS in terms of software stability. There are so many hidden features and settings which I am still to discover from Instagram dealers who have been making part 420 of their series about things you didn't know about the iPhone. Jokes apart, in my opinion, the software is a solid 7 out of 10 because of the lack of, the si because of, the lack of side loading and customizations I reduced into around 7 but apart from that it's like a super smooth experience. The battery life on this phone is not that great compared to my previous phone but that's because my previous phone had a 7000 mAh battery. Jokes apart I'm not a heavy user or maybe I am because and I heavy user in the sense I don't like play that many games I just use my phone to watch videos scroll Instagram or Twitter play casual games so the battery lasted me the entire day most of the time and I charge my phone overnight. The phone charges from 20% to 100% in about 1 to 1.5 hours. I haven't measured the exact time. Um, using the 20 watt charger, which is not present in the box, which I had to buy separately. Overall, battery for me is a 7 out of 10. After using the phone a bit more, I noticed some weird things. Although a lot of people praise the low idle drain of this phone, somehow that wasn't the case for me. Many days I'd go to bed with the battery percentage at 35-40. And when I wake up in the morning, it will be around 20%. It is probably a software glitch or something like that, but it happened many times, though it got fixed after a few days. But 
I'm not sure if it's a bug, like I said, but yeah, I'm just reporting what I noticed. The next thing I want to talk about is the haptics. I feel it is the most underrated feature of any smartphone. One of the best features of iPhones has to be its haptic feedback. I cannot show it on camera, I'll try my best to, but in every UI element, there is haptic feedback, which enhances the feel of the phone by 10 x Haptic feedback is easily a 10 out of 10 for me, and Apple has nailed it in terms of haptic feedback, be it in the iPhone or in the Apple Watch or even in the MacBook. Let's talk about the speakers. The iPhone 13 comes with stereo speakers, one at the bottom and other in the earpiece. The speakers get very loud, so I usually use it at 50 to 60% volume. The sound quality doesn't get distorted at very high volume, and the sound quality overall is very rich and balanced. Here's an audio sample you can listen to it yourself, and let us know your thoughts on the audio quality in the comments below. Another addition I appreciate is the mute switch which is only there on OnePlus phones in the Android scene. Before talking about the cons, if you are watching this video till now, then please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video so that the algorithm pushes this review to more people. Coming to the cons, there, these might not necessarily be cons but these are some software features that I miss coming from an Android phone. First thing is the lack of lot of apps. The App Store has way lesser apps compared to the present compared to that in Play Store. For example, I used to use an ad silencer app for Spotify, which is not available in the App Store. The next thing was the non-existence of developer settings, which was a lifesaver in some situations in Android. For example, I'm a person who plays a lot of casual games, and those games are filled with in-game ads, if you know. There was a developer setting in Android, I don't exactly remember which one it was, but when you turned that off, the in-game ads just vanished and that was like a lifesaver for me, but something like this doesn't exist in iOS. The last gripe I have is that you don't have the option to take a long screenshot. Me and Gautam share a lot of screenshots to each other, especially latest tech news and stuff. So whenever there was a little longer tweet, especially specifications of a phone or something like that, I had the option to take a long screenshot in Android, which isn't there here in iOS. I have to share the tweet with Gautam, which could be an inconvenience for him rather than just viewing the screenshot of the tweet. This could be added in the future software update, but I'm pretty sure Apple won't do that. Are these cons deal breakers? Do I regret switching to the iPhone just because of these things? I was. I was prepared for the lesser options from Android, but these two, three things were something I really wish that they were there in iOS somehow. I've just gotten used to the changes and these things might not even matter to you. Will I recommend this phone if someone asks me? 100% I would, if you are getting it at a really good price. If you are ready to spend over 50k for a phone and you are looking for an iPhone, I would recommend you check the iPhone 14 or the iPhone 15 since their price has already been dropping to as low as 65k or even lesser for the iPhone 14 now that the iPhone 16 launch is approaching. And, and on the iPhone 15 you also get the advantage of the better cameras, Type-C port and uh, the dynamic island etc. Overall in my experience I'd rate the iPhone 13 a solid 8 out of 10. That was my experience of the iPhone 13. If you disagree with any of my opinions or you have a different experience with your iPhone, you can drop your views or your experience of the iPhone 13 in the comment section down below. That would help other users who are probably thinking about buying this phone. If you want to know more about the Apple Watch SE, then click the video on the left here and I'll catch you then.